Welcome to Sony Simplified, where we give you simple tips and tricks on how to use some of our favorite Sony products. My name's Elizabeth, and I'm here today to talk to you about macro photography. So first I wanna talk about what exactly is macro photography and how you achieve it. Then I wanna show you some sample photos, a bad photo, a couple good ones, give you some tips and tricks on how to get the best macro photos that you can get. And I'm going to end today with a live demonstration of exactly how to take macro photos. So before I start, make sure you jump on in the chat. The chat is nice and live for you. Say hi, let me know what's your favorite camera to use and if you have any experience using a macro lens. From my experience, macro photography definitely has a learning curve, okay? I've been doing photography for a very long time, but macro, a little bit different. So what is macro photography? Typically, when we take a photo with your ordinary standard lens, the subject decreases in size, so you get a smaller image on the sensor than what's in reality. And that makes sense, right? You take a portrait of somebody or your dog, and obviously we're gonna shrink it in size because we're not blowing it up six feet, right? What macro photography is able to do is it's able to give you a one-to-one -one ratio. What that means, the size of the object in real life is the size of the object, how it appears on your sensor or on your image for you. So not every lens is capable of doing macro photography. You actually need to have a certain macro lens. One of the things with macro photography is it will tell you predominantly on the lens what it is. So we have here today my 90 millimeter macro lens f2.8 and on my focusing wheel right here, it says a one to one ratio. So when I am at the minimum focusing distance, I will get a one to one ratio. The object in real life will be the same size as the object on the sensor, okay? Also my macro lens, because of that, I'm able to get closer to my subject focus distance than I am necessarily with a traditional lens, okay? So I'm gonna take a look over here. It looks like we have Marvelous 03. He says, they say that they love macro photography and they're always taking pictures of spiders. Well, Marvelous 03, just you wait for what I have in store for you. Spiders were super easy to find for my test shots. Okay, I'm um, so, Let's go ahead and take a look at some of our macro photos for you. Austin is here. He's my producer. He's doing all of the behind the scenes work. So definitely give him a shout out. Thanks, Austin, for all of your hard work. When you're taking macro photos, you really want to go slow. You're looking for spiders and bugs. You're looking for small things. When you're going on your nature walks, go slow. But maybe you're a wedding photographer and you wanna pick up a macro lens to take beautiful shots of the bride's shoes and of the bride's wedding ring. Fantastic. You can also use this macro lens for portraits as well. I forgot to mention that earlier, so I just wanted to touch back on that. So if you're doing weddings or if you're doing food photography, you can use this macro lens to zoom in or to do a nice macro shot, or you can also do full focus as well and get the entire cake or get the entire portrait for that bridal photo that you would like. It's very versatile. So you really wanna go nice and slow. My first sample photo that I wanna show you is going to be my spider photo. Now, if you notice with this spider photo, it's kind of busy in the background. I'm, I'm also brand new to macro photography. This is probably the second or third time I've used this lens. And I was so focused on getting my spider in focus and making sure that the spider was visible that I didn't pay any attention to the background. And so do you see how busy 
that background is, it's really taking away from emphasizing the spider. You almost have to look all over the photo to find where that spider is. One tip for macro photography is to really make sure you have separation between your subject and your background, okay? We will be shooting on F22 when you are doing a one-to-one -one ratio using your macro lens, okay? F22, you're like, whoa, that's gonna give me everything in focus. Yes, you want every detail of that spider in focus. So it's really important to pay attention to that background. The second photo that Austin popped up for you is the spider where I was a little bit more conscious about the background. You see more bokeh there, you can see more separation, you can focus more on the spider and less on the busy background. Some people give you tips and tricks that you can stick a leaf behind the spider, you can put things behind it to really give you that separation or to block out the other branches. As a beginner, I found that to be challenging. I'm holding a camera in one hand that I'm trying to focus and then I'm trying to hold the leaf behind the spider as I'm trying not to disturb the web and not trying to scare the spider. Needless to say, I abandoned that idea and I just switched my angles to get that bokeh. The next photo that Austin's really gonna show you, or not really, the next photo that Austin's gonna show you is my flower bud photo. So remember I mentioned shooting on an F22 when you're doing macro photo and you're like, but Liz, Elizabeth, Liz, you can't get bokeh when you shoot an F22. Yes, you can. You have to make sure there is enough separation between your subject and the background for you, okay? This one is shot on an F22. And so that way you're able to see the fine details of that flower bud while everything else in the picture kind of melts and blurs away for you, all right? My last tip that I wanna give you before I go into an actual demo of macro photography is going to be my purple flower. If you notice on this purple flower, it fills the frame. And that's really what you're looking for with fantastic macro photos that are Instagram worthy, that are let's sell, sell this to stock photography worthy. Your macro photos will fill the frame so all you're focusing on is just the image and you don't have to worry about a distracting background, okay? So without further ado, um, looking over here, let me know where you guys are at, what's going on, um, and hop into chat and let me know how everything's going. So I'm now gonna show you guys a sample and I'm going to show you guys exactly how you can do macro photography. What I have off camera that you'll not be able to see is going to be your macro lens. I also have it set up with your A7 IV for you on the ACVC1 Vlogger Grip. I'm using it as a tabletop tripod, which is really my preference, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and connect my lens Checking over here. Thanks, Marvel. Thanks, Marvelous 03. I love that flower as well. That flower was last minute. It was definitely, I thought I was done. I thought all, all I was getting was spiders and I was on my way home and somebody had those beautiful purple flowers in their yard and it was golden hour. And I was like, yes, I'm taking that photo. Okay, so let me go ahead and take a look right over here. Perfect. This is the rose that I'll be taking the photo of today. So you can see as I get it closer and closer to this lens, one, we're losing lights because that's not where my light's set up. But as I get it closer, it's not focusing on it, right? And then it's focusing it on right about here, but it's super, it's not super close. 
it's just kind of eh. So now off camera, I have a light box for you. With macro photography, I also highly, highly recommend external light sources. So you can use an external flash. You can buy some sample, you, you can buy some LED lights and light your subjects that way. You can get creative with it, but definitely macro photography, you need to have light. So Austin, I'll let you know when I'm ready here in just one second. My flower is a little, there we go. Okay. All right, Austin, when you are ready, you can go ahead and put Bcam live. All right, you guys should be able to now see my A7 IV and my row set up in my light box. As you can see, it perfectly fills the frame for you and you have great detail and we're able to focus on it nicely, okay? Let's look at my settings here for one second, all right? I've adjusted my white balance to what the color temperature is on my light box, so I'm not gonna mess with that. I told you that we wanna shoot on F22 for the most detail in our photos, right? So you can see that I'm an F22. My ISO is booted up a little higher than I would like, Unfortunately, that's a drawback of the light box. It is what it is. And then my shutter speed is one over three. I'm on a tabletop tripod, so that's a perfectly okay shutter speed. Since I am using a tripod, I did turn off optical steady shot on the lens. This way it doesn't counteract with what the tripod is already doing and trying to overwork itself again. If you are using a tripod, turn off optical steady shot so that way it doesn't counteract with what it's already trying to do. Big tip from a pro. Um, so the other thing that I have as well, it's your choice on whether you wanna shoot manual or autofocus. I really, I've, I've had a lot of auto or a lot of manual focus in my time. I bought Sony because the autofocus works and it works well. So I choose to shoot on autofocus on my Sony's because I know I'm going to get the perfect sub, the perfect uh, focusing. Okay. So my autofocus is on and you can see that right there, you see how I'm focusing on the pedal and I'm not really focusing on the center. I want to focus on the center. So I'm going to use the little dial. You see how it's going in that direction. So that white box, I'm going to move it slowly but surely to the center. Oops. This is when you're trying to do things backwards. Oops, wrong way. There we go. Okay, so now that white box is on the center of my flower and it focused. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture. It's also on a timer. I forgot to mention that part. So because I'm using a tripod, I wanted to go ahead and make sure that I don't hit that button and it go camera shake and then I get blur and shake and all of that, right? So using it on a timer, it was a two second delay. I pressed the button, it counted down two seconds and then I got this beautiful photo. And this is the image. F22 and see how perfectly clear and in focus everything is, even we get a little blur as we get to that green over there, but that's okay. Now, if you don't believe me that F2.8 is too wide of an aperture, let me go ahead, or too, yeah, too wide of an aperture, let me go ahead and prove it to you. So this is what will happen if you shoot on an F2.8 versus an F22 when you're doing macro photos. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to change, what did I change? Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and change my f-stop. Yes, I know the photo is getting very, very bright because obviously with the exposure triangle, that's what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and turn down my ISO right about there. Turn down one more stop to bring in that orange. One more stop to bring in that orange. Yeah, right about there, okay? 
focus point has not changed. I've still left the focus point on the same part, took a photo, and if I hit play, it's just not as crisp and clear on those petals that the F22 was. And remember, this flower is filling the entire frame. On my spider photos, when I was trying to shoot at an F22 before I wanted to use a flash, I had the spider's head in focus and nothing else. F22 or F2.8 is just too large of an aperture to use during macro photography. That's what I have for you. So my three tips for you to recap is make sure you go slow. Manual focus or autofocus, that's really up to you, but definitely just go slow. My second tip for you was to fill the frame with the subject or to have enough separation between your subject and your background so you can get beautiful bokeh or your whole subject takes the frame. My third tip for you was to shoot on an F22 and not an F2.8. And my bonus tip number four is use a light source. Macro photography, you need to have an external light source and have some fun. Photo this macro photography, if you are bored, this will re-inspire you to take beautiful photos, okay? You might even go buy a light box so you could try out some macro photography. So thank you so much for joining me. Don't go just yet. Couple things before you leave. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe so you can get notified to all of our brand new Sony Simplified episodes. These are for you and we do everything from cameras to TVs to speakers. Sony makes it, we got a video for you. Also, you guys are buying Sony products. Make sure you register them. We love to take care of customers who register their products and promotions are constantly changing, okay? So register your Sony products today, don't delay. Haha. Uh, the last thing I want to leave you guys with um, is I want your input. Again, these seminars are all for you, right? So what is it that you want us to talk about? Do you want to see us talk about wedding tips and give you wedding tips and tricks on how to get the best wedding photography photos? Do you want outdoor and nature tips and tricks so that way you can get fantastic scenery shots? Do you have a graduate? Do you have a grad in the family and you need some graduation tips? Let us know. Or maybe there's something else that you want us to show you. Go ahead and drop it down in the comments, not in the chat after we go after we're done going live. Make sure you leave everything in the comments, no longer in the chat. And if you have any other questions that I was not able to answer today regarding your Sony products, make sure you sign up for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Wow, chat has been blowing up while I've been talking. Martin, thank you so much for joining us today. The movie snob is on. X Ronan X Large is here. Um, you guys are, Dan is here as well. You guys are fantastic. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, and also one last thing. Um, it's my friend's birthday. Gumi uh, is a dog. Uh, she turned two today and it's her birthday. So happy birthday, Gumi. And that's all I have. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye.